you may be forgiven for believing werewolves are things of myth and legend. You would be correct, to a degree, but all myths emerge from some form of truth. There are diseases and syndromes that link to the werewolf genome. Hair growing all over the body, including the palms of the hands, was once believed to be a signifier or evidence of a werewolf. For countless generations, cultures across the world have passed on tales of lichens. And even today, in our modern age, we still watch in awe the werewolves of the silver screen. Why are we mesmerized by the myth? If it was so ludicrous as to not be possible, surely we wouldn't be scared and fearful of the werewolf. Yet we are. There is a part in our reptilian brain that fears the werewolf. Is it fear of the unknown, fear of the plausible, or perhaps it's a tribal memory, something programmed into our brain by millennia of being the hunted, something that lurks there to protect us. Part of the fight, flight, or fright instinct. Unlike Bigfoot or the Chupacabra, the werewolf has been assigned to pure fable. Nobody goes out hunting for them anymore. But once they did. At one time, throughout Europe, men made a good living from the capture and execution of werewolves. It was a highly skilled profession, with experts knowing where a werewolf was likely to hide out in the daylight hours during the three nights of the full moon. The skill of proving that a man or woman was in fact a werewolf was so highly prized that even apprentices were handsomely paid by a village desperate enough to rid themselves of a werewolf. Conversely, a werewolf pelt was equally prized. Having the ability to turn the wearer into such a beast almost at will if the right concoctions and spells were used. It would seem that the ability to change to a beast of the night was worth every risk of capture and execution. In Eastern Europe, it wasn't so long ago that very real hunting parties went in search of the beast. Fearful men, no longer possessing the skills of the werewolf hunter, went out to try to find and kill a beast that they were terrified of finding. Is it any wonder that accidents happened, men went missing, or an innocent victim was mistakenly identified as their prey? 
Eastern Europe is still very wild in comparison to the more civilized Western Europe. And that is where our journey into the world of the werewolf began. Reality films were approached by a man who claimed to have captured a werewolf on camera. He insisted there were many eyewitness accounts to back him up. We were highly skeptical, of course. That was, until we saw the footage. This is the account of how we were drawn into one of the biggest stories the world has seen in generations. This is the search for the werewolf. Put me on YouTube! Put us on YouTube! YouTube! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! What was that? <laughs> Phil! Bullshit! The concept of the werewolf goes back to pre-Christian Europe where it was widespread. It then migrated through colonization to the New World and beyond. There are accounts of Roman soldiers becoming wolves at certain times, and the Greeks had a whole race of them. Now, almost everyone on the planet thinks they know the truth about lycanthropy.
In truth, there are two strands running here. Lycanthropy is the word given to a disease, a psychiatric disorder which feeds the delusion of the victim changing from man into wolf. But the word werewolf actually just means adult male human wolf, a mixture of human genes and wolf genes. Were, man, and wolf, wolf, man wolf. We have come to believe that humans evolved from the ape, and there is a great deal of scientific evidence for this. However, there are missing links, and there are a great many ancient tales of man-wolves. So, one must ask the question, why are there so many tales of this across the ancient world? And why the affinity between the modern domesticated dog and man. As for the metamorphosis, well, that is extremely common in the natural world. And DNA, which we share with all life, plays some very strange tricks. There are references to humans changing into wolves from several ancient sources. In histories, Herodotus explained that a tribe known as the Neuri were actually transformed for several days each year. Pausanias in the 2nd century told of a lycan who was transformed into a wolf because he had killed a child. In Ovid's version of the Greek myth, he said that King Lycaon of Arcadia served the flesh of his own dismembered son to Zeus to see if the god really was omniscient. Zeus became furious at the deception and he cursed Lycaon to be trapped in a wolf form and his 50 sons to be struck down by lightning bolts. Other ancient writers also spoke about werewolves. Virgil, Pliny the Elder, and Agriopas. All are learned men respected by their peers and not given to such fantasy as perpetuating stories and fairy tales. In most cases, it appears that the ability to turn into a wolf is some form of punishment for sins, as if it were somehow a terrible thing. Moving forward in time and into medieval Europe, we find that before the 14th century, tales of werewolves are scarce. But they are there, and some have pointed to the human population and rise in hunting to the decline of both the werewolf and the wild man. Indeed, it could be that the wild man we know today as Bigfoot could in fact have been sightings of werewolves. There is also the fact that Christianity was stamping its authority all over Europe and ruling out such pagan ideas as the werewolf. And yet, it remained and lurked around in popular culture, making resurgences in the 20th century in popular movies. The famous poem which starts, Even a man who is pure of heart, is not ancient lore as some believe. It was composed for the 1941 movie The Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr. Even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolf vein blooms and the autumn moon is bright.
right with the cone? Yeah, okay. Uh, just over, over there. Come. We've seen three line here. It popped up, popped up, and I uh, run after, run after this thing. Look like big dog is a but walk like man. There, squatting, squatting, crouching in tree line. We walking along here, and it popped up and. Woman screamed and me ran towards Big Doggy. The concept of the werewolf was common and widespread back in pre-Christian Europe and then with colonisation it moved through into the New World. There were accounts of Roman soldiers turning into werewolves at certain times and the Greeks had a whole race of them. In Scandinavia there was physical evidence as Harald I of Norway was known to have the body of a wolf. These were known as Ulfhedna and were warrior elites who dressed in wolf skin and channeled the spirits of the wolf. They were highly resistant to pain and fought like wild animals. They were known as Odin's special warriors, the gods' elite troops. The German berserkers from Old Norse literature similarly fought in uncontrollable trance-like states. They were reputed to be unstoppable, and theoretically, one reason for their trance was drugged food. Perhaps there was another reason for their superhuman strength and stamina on the battlefield. In Slavic history, there was a prince who was considered to be a werewolf. He was capable of moving at superhuman speeds, judging the people in the day and prowling at night. He had supernatural hearing and could hear the bells of Polotsk when he was in Kiev, a distance of 400 miles. The concepts of the werewolf merged with other myths, such as those of the vampire and the massive witchcraft panic that struck Europe in the 14th century. There were even werewolf trials. Cures for werewolfism include surgery, exorcism, and wolfsbane. Given that wolfsbane is an accumulative poison, aconite, it's no wonder then that the majority of werewolves were cured fatally. In 16th century France, werewolf trials were rife. Werewolves were linked with witches, who were persecuted throughout the New World and witches were said to be able to communicate with the devil and turn men into werewolves. In 16th century France, there were numerous reports of werewolf attacks and this in turn gave rise to the werewolf trials. Murder and cannibalism charges, if you can call it that, were aimed at the man-fiends. In fact, it was common practice in witchcraft trials to charge the witch with being or flirting with werewolves. As with witch trials across Europe and the New World at the time, those souls accused of witchcraft were doomed before the trial began. If the method of extracting a confession didn't kill the witch, then surely the cure would. I was, uh, I was 
walking uh, down this path here and uh, it was about here that I stopped and it was just over there on the corner it's the, 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 the dog, the, the creature and I saw him just near the tree there and that's where I stopped, I walked, I stopped and I looked and that's when he looked, he looked at me I thought, oh, what is this? And that's when I thought, this is a dog, or this, this is, this is a man. I, I don't know. But then the smell, it, it started to come across, and it was like horrible smell. And then, from behind, over the trees, there was like a, the, the bang. And that's when he looked up, he stopped looking at me, he then looked up, heard the bang, and then went running off. And he, he the, the big tree here, just behind there, over the ridge, he ran, just over there. But it was, it was close, it was, it was not nice. I could see him looking at me with his eyes. Just here. And then he ran, just, just behind, just behind, just here. So, but he was from here, back here, very big, very big. So, but too big for a dog, uh, too quick for man. He's boom, gone. Just across here, from here to here. This way, here. Run, jump, up the hill. Run the back and gone. Just like that. It was it was frightening. It was really, really close. Gone. Just there. But uh, I was I was scared. I, I did not know what to do. Do I run? Did he chase me? Do I do I stand still? I don't know. But here is where I saw the, the creature, the beast, whatever you want to call it. This is where I saw him. That was too close for me. I do not want to see him again. Far too close for me, no. Never again. I did not like it. And I, I would not be coming back up here again. I am here because I am with you. But no, I will not come up here. I, I'm too scared. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to... I don't know what he is. I don't know what he's going to do. I, I don't know. So I will. I will stay away from here now. I will go a different way. But there are lots of people along the road or something. Not here. I am. I am too scared of this. I do not want this. It's strange. There should not be things like this. That we don't know. No, I do not. I do not. I do not wish to be here. I feel very uncomfortable. It's uh, not natural, not natural, it's not nice. I've heard lots of people say they have seen this creature. But until you actually see it yourself, no. No, it gets me here, my heart is pounding. I do not like it, I do not like it at all. Back in the 1960s, it was postulated that the whole concept of the werewolf could actually have some basis in biological fact. Symptoms of people with photosensitivity 
reveals some very clear similarities to the myth of the werewolf. For example, reddish teeth, psychosis, add to that the condition known as hypertrichosis, whereby the body is covered in hair, and we have some very clear vestiges of a possible ancient genetic link to real werewolves. Yes, real werewolves. The truth is that belief in actual werewolves continued in many parts of Europe right up until the 20th century. The question is, why? The modern books and films focus on the passing of the condition through bite, and this has led some to believe that rabies was the origin of the legend itself. But the truth is, our ancestors did not believe in such things. The bite contagion is a modern myth, convenient for storytellers and movie makers to perpetuate the myth and enable the story to come to a satisfying conclusion in the defeat and destruction of the beast, while leaving ample room for a sequel. Wolfman 2, anyone? Legend tells us that werewolves were families, tribes or vestiges of some ancient species. They did not bite their victims and leave them, they ate them. When we take a step back and look at the actual evidence, we find a story strange to our modern ears. We find tales from ancient times of a species of human wolf that was so terrifying it scared the hell out of ordinary people. We find bloodlines that go as high as royalty. We find no magic from the movies. We discover vestigial human diseases that may come from a genetic link between ourselves and this missing link. And we find that Eastern Europe is most definitely the place that any vestiges of this missing link would be found today. Strange then, that the individual who came forward with footage of a real werewolf and numerous eyewitness accounts was in fact from Slovenia. And so, we packed our bags, booked our tickets and set off in search of the werewolf.
this is where we were. Out one day, having long walk in sun, doing little filming. We were walking over there. Uh, we heard noise. It was very big. To be honest, we were shocked and a uh, little scared. Yeah. We saw much more in real life than you see on camera. It, it was very, very big. What was the smell like? Uh, smell uh, that of a uh, vet dog. I smell like big vet dog. Bojan captured on tape that day and the subsequent eyewitness accounts it's truly staggering. Iago, put me on YouTube! Put it on YouTube! YouTube! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Film! Bojan! Bojan described the beast as being around seven feet tall, with a lot of body hair and a strange dog-like face, and that afterwards he remembered the smell. At first he thought there was something rotten in the water, but then realised when the beast had gone, so too had the stench. I was walking my dog, as I do every day around 6 p.m. It was a normal day, really. Then I heard a sound, a noise, really. It was almost like a dog, but somehow more painful. More of a, what's the word, um, squeal. I looked over to where the noise had come from. And I saw a man, or at least what I thought of a man.
he was stood at the tree line. And when I saw him, I think he knew, and he ran off. Alexander is from the same area as Bojan. Their mothers know each other. When word filtered out to the local community, Bojan was surprised to find dozens of other people who had seen something strange. Many had remained quiet through fear of being ridiculed. The sightings have increased in the area. Now every day there's a report coming in. We can't decide if there's more than one of them or not because the descriptions differ slightly. The evidence seems to suggest a definite male and female pair at the very least. What's worrying are the reports of hunters. The 20th century has given rise to a resurgence in the werewolf. We don't know why the resurgence actually appeared at, at and around that time. From the Viking times at the turn of the last millennia to this millennia, perhaps it's a thousand years thing. As we were filming Alexander, we noticed something move in the bushes. This is what we got. Jim. Just, just ducking. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No way, man. Ducking. It's so weird! 
We talked to many witnesses during our stay. The story was almost always the same. A movement. A feeling of being watched. A rustle in the undergrowth. A strong odour and an image of a hairy, huge, dog-like human running away. Many of Bojan's neighbours did not want to be filmed. We're not sure if they still fear ridicule or something more sinister. Could it be that the werewolf is back? Is there a family of this ancestral legacy walking the forests and woods of Slovenia? And will we once again hunt it to extinction? We go hunt a wet dog. Yeah, your wet, wet doggy, dog, yeah. you run that way. We go. I'm ready for the dog. Go, you have weapons, go. Thank you. 
I don't know. He's, he's gone, he's gone. Is he okay? Yuri, oh. he's gone. <sighs> we, we, we hit it. I know. He's, he's dead or... Uh, so I was just running around doing my daily wolf type things and <laughs> all that have these people everywhere I go they persecute me because I hairy you know and I just wanted to go and have food have a wee have procreate <laughs> and everywhere I go they come at me running scared and I just go no I would say, hello I'm so alone so it's so hard to be a wolf because the dogs think you're too big and scary and the humans they you know, they, they think you're scary too. And I got nowhere to go. You know, got no house, got no home, can't get no dog food nowhere, no no human, nothing. <laughs> so hopefully you can set up a, a charity line. It is a number <laughs> for the wolves to help wolves like me make friends. Wolf book, join wolf book now and make, be my friend. Skip off. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you cat! Cat! Get off my lawn! Get off my lawn! <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> love me, love my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I was just running around doing my daily wolf type things and <laughs> all that have these people everywhere I go they persecute me because I hairy you know and I just wanted to go and have food have a wee have procreate <laughs> and everywhere I go they come at me running scared and I just go no I would say, hello I'm so alone 
So it's so hard to wear wool because the dogs think you're too big and scary, and the humans they, you know, they they think you're scary too. And I got nowhere to go. You know, got no house, got no home, can't get no dog food nowhere, no no human, nothing. <laughs> so hopefully you can set up a, a charity line. It is a number <laughs> for the wolves to help wolves like me make friends. Wolf book. Join Wolf book now and make, be my friend. Skip off. <laughs> <laughs> hey you cat! Cat! Get off my lord! Get off my lord! <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> love me, love my dog. Yeah. <laughs>